Uh, hello, this is a uh, pilot exercise on a piloting, exer piloting exercise, a running fix, a standard running fix. This is an example from our workbook. We're going to be doing a series uh, in Chapter 6, 6, 3, 4, 5, and 6 maybe, but at least the first couple of those. And we'll solve them two ways. I'm going to first solve them with, electronic, with an electronic chart, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, do it the uh, same way with a manual with uh, parallel rulers and dividers. But the first is going to be electronic chart. And so let me uh, show you here. This is the workbook we're using, uh, Navigation Workbook 18465. That's the one. It's for sale at our web page and various other places, Amazon and so forth. And we're working then problem six. Uh, well, okay, ultimately I want to do 6.4 on the bow angles, but the first, uh, it turns out to work this when you really have to work number three. So this is a running fix, and it says that we're sailing north, uh, north from this rocky point, and we have a given heading, and it's magnetic. And then your log reads, and when the log reads that, and that's an odometer, just a, like a mi miles odometer on a car, it's a running log. Doesn't mean that you've sailed that many miles today. It just means that since you set that to zero, or maybe it came from the store fat manufacturer, that's that. That's a mile. It's just a running record of how many miles you went. You are you take a bearing uh, to this buoy and uh, off a Dungeness spit, and that's 297. So that's a line of position. But first of all, in this book, in uh, somewhere in the introduction to this, I don't know if he says, says it here. Um, no, there is a review. Um, we actually, somewhere in this chapter, point out that nor we do bearing fixes, we do piloting, various kinds of fixes using buoys here for exercises, but that's mainly for convenience, mainly for convenience. When you're underway, you would generally try to avoid using buoys because they might not be at the right spot. So you would like to use uh, rocks or lights on a beacon of some kind and so forth. But for, for getting exercise and use various parts of the chart, we occasionally do use buoys. So with that in mind, we're taking a bearing to a buoy. And then, um, okay, then you carry on that same course, and a little while later, the buoy has moved, uh, has moved uh, to 262. And then the log reads that. So what is that? I mean, the first thing we could look at and just say, how much did I move between the two buoys? And, I'm, and so my log reading is uh, 552.4 at the second one. Yeah, let's see. Um, oh no, five uh, reads five fifty two point four, and at the second one it reads five fifty six point four. So in between these two sites, with a compass, with a hand bearing compass, the uh, boat moved four point oh nautical miles on a course three thirty two m. So that's our main that's our main navigation, and and that's just one object. And we have two bearings to it at two different times from two different locations. And that's plenty enough information to discover where we are. And this is finding our position from just one object. And that's uh, called a running fix. And so then we ask here, uh, so they ask us to do a running fix. And then how far are you from the buoy to? OK, that's just a way to specify your answer. What is your distance off the northernmost point of the Dallas Bank 10 fathom curve? That's just another way to check the answer. And what is the water depth? Again, so instead of just saying, your la what is my latitude and longitude, there's three answers. It's just saying, take the point you found and describe it with these three different characteristics, none of which is just plain latitude and longitude. All right, there we go. So we're, we're at, um, we're at uh, where are we? Rocky Point, and we're headed north, 332M. So let's do that, and I'm going to first do it with OpenCPN and Rocky Point, I think. Yeah, okay, so here's Rocky Point right here, and we're somewhere here headed uh, 332M. So what we do is just pick a point. It doesn't matter where, because we don't, what we're after is trying to find out where we are. So we obviously don't know where we are to begin with. So I'm going to use the route tool over here on the left, and I'm just going to start here, and I'm going to go north. Oh! Stop. Bang. Exit. Delete. All right. I forgot something. 
Uh, delete, 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 delete. Okay, good. So we're doing an electronic charting, an e-chart program. So I've got to be sure that I've got this e-chart all set up right with regard to magnetic bearings. Remember, we are using a training chart that got frozen in time sometime in the ni early 90s or some you know, a long time ago. And so we got to use the same variation. This variation on this chart, you see, varies from 1945. Other places, it'll be 20. You know, if you look over here, what is it? Well, it's 1945 there as well. Um, here's 1930. Well, none of that matters. We have decided in our workbook that we're going to use tw we're going to round that off to 20.0 e, uh, east all the time. So we go up to open C and this is open CPN. You could do this in any chart program. Okay, go to the options, uh, go to display, and it's under units, and we want. Um, uh, we want to show this in magnetic heading, magnetic bearings. They have an option in this program to show true bearings. And you could turn them on and show both of them in every maneuver. However, we strongly recommend don't do that. You choose the one you want and then just use it. Otherwise, you will uh, inevitably make a mistake. And here's where we set the 20 degrees. Um, we set the 20 degree and look east is east is just a plus number so that's right we're going to do that and then to set the magnetic you must disable this plugin now that's a very nice powerful plugin that tells me no matter where i am on the chart in fact where i am in the world once i once i have this plugin i can go anywhere in the world and get the very latest up to date it's reading the time, it's reading the date from your computer and the lat lon from your e-chart program, and it's going to tell you the exact magnetic variation. Now that is something that's a very important tool for your real navigation, but we do not want that now. Now we must force this thing to be 20. So let's go in here and do what it, just double check that that's shut off. Uh, okay, W, this is it. Enable. See, enable. That means it is disabled now. So we're, this thing is off, so we're good to go. All right, that's everything. We got magnetic right. We got it set to 20 degrees, and we can start our problem. Sorry for that delay, but that's uh, important when you're using the each this e-chart program. In fact, those kind of cautions that I just went through are important for any charting program, even if it's this one's free. But if your program costs two thousand dollars, you still want to do that. Okay, uh, Rocky Point. And we're going to be going, uh, what was our heading there? I think it, we were headed north, 332M. Okay, so I'm going to just get a route tool here and go Rocky Point and start here. And then I'm going to just go, I'm, now I'm rolling the mouse to get a zoom out. And I'm going to go up to 332M, and that's my course. Now watch this. You see that says 339M. Now I'm going to go left, and you see it's 2, 321. I, the, 321, I want to go 3, oh gosh, why not, 332. So I go up 3, 8, uh, 331. Now I keep going, and right there, 332. You see, I could go a little bit more, and it still reads 332, and that's like 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So you want to go up and turn, so just to 331, just till it turns 332. Bang, bang, right there, right there, bang, that's it done escape so there's a line going north at 332 now if you were doing this on a paper chart which we'll do in a moment we would just come over here to this magnetic rose get a 332 on here you see let me just zoom that in so you would go in here I'm doing the M key now I'm going to hear M here and then go three I'm on the magnetic scale see not the outside that's true inside magnetic 332 I would just I would just put my parallel rulers right well okay that's it when you use the M key you can read things and get nice bearings but it doesn't stay permanent so if you want to make something permanent go up here and get the, the route tool then you can okay route tool then you can go here and put this here and then 332 is right here bang so then you would put your parallel rulers on here and then just move that line over to wherever you think you're going to be. I'll come back to that later for paper, doing it with paper. Right now, you can see we have a, we just guessed a point. We just guessed some random point down here and drew a line at 332. 
something like that. Now, what's our, what have we measured? Let me go back to see what have we measured. Uh, um, uh, what, uh, three, 6.3, um, 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 bearing, we're, we're bearing two. And the first one, we have bearing 297 to that buoy. Now, again, on a paper, you would do this a little bit different. But here, we have to do a kind of a trick because we, we're going backwards in a sense. So we want to go a bearing, we want a, li we want a line that goes through here bearing 297 magnetic. But 297 magnetic is that way. So I'm going to just do a trick. I'm going to go back up here and get this buoy, get the, the tool. I'm going to draw that dot right on the buoy. Then I'm going to go up. Till I get to 297, uh, whoop, uh, 294, five, 5, 6, 7. Bang, I'm done. But now I'm not going to hit escape. I'm going to go backwards in time. So now I'm going back here and rolling the mouse out a little bit. And I'm going back here. Oh, oh that's interesting. 297. They took that, they took that bearing apparently right away. Escape. Let me just see if that. I'm gonna go to the M key. I just want to double check that. I'm really, is that 297? 297M, and the problem says uh, problem says 297M. Okay, so okay, the problem could have been worded somewhat differently, but boy, they they apparently took off in that direction and the first thing they did is they saw that buoy and took a bearing to it okay so that's that buoy and that's at the first log reading then they go on and a little and they're going north like that and as you see if you go north like that the bearing of that thing is coming down coming down and so what they found here was uh, at you go 297 you continue and later you get 262, and now the log is that, and we've just did the math, that's four miles later. If you're going four miles an hour, four knots, then it was an hour later. If you're going eight knots, it was a half an hour later. But anyway, this is how many miles through the water. Four miles through the water later, you take a bearing 262M. So we do the same thing again. We come up here to this guy, come up to this guy, and then I'm going to take this uh, tool, and I'm going to go 262. Yes, use the same point. 262, 261, 262, stop, and then come right back, do the same trick, and this is the second bearing, like that, escape. All right, so what do we know? We know we were headed in this direction, we know we were headed in this direction, and when we started down here at the first log reading, we were somewhere on this line, we don't know where, we could just as well have been here. Right or here or here or somewhere. Well, we weren't on land, obviously. So, uh, uh, so we were somewhere on this line. We don't know more. Then we sailed four miles in this direction, and then we know we were on this line. So basically, a running fix is I just have to find the one point on here where I can go four miles in that direction and end up on this line, and I'm there. And the way that we do that is uh, just advance this line to this line with the parallel rulers. We just put the parallel rulers on here and move it up here. But with this, we have to do a trick. We have to um, we have to uh, draw a line. Um, we have to come off of here somewhere and move our parallel rulers. Uh, let's see. We want to go four miles. We want to go. At, okay. So we would start at this point right here. Right where the okay, so we go from right here. We're gonna go up for this is where we were, you know. We're gonna say we started here and we went four miles up to here, and then we had this bearing. That's gonna be the same as this one. All right, so let me do that. I've got to go. Um, let me get the tool. I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna go up four miles. four miles 4.0 that's something like right there now I'm going to go back the same original bearing this is just like using the parallel rulers so this is like 297 uh, no what was it what was the first one the first was 297 297 so that's right there 
and um, okay actually I can stop there that's that because this, this is where I was you see this is now what's equivalent is I just took any place on this line I took any place on this line and I went four miles in direction 232 and then drew and then moved this line to there so our position is right here this is this line we would call a uh, log, uh, you know, a bearing at log uh, uh, 552, and then uh, this 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 line here we would call 552 moved advanced to 556, and then this is the line at 556. So the intersection of those two is our fix, which is right here. So that point is our fix. And I could drop a mark. Well, with this program, if I try to drop a mark right there, it won't let me because I'm, it's, I'm on something. So what you do is you come off to the side, drop a mark. Let me make it a little more prominent. Go over to the triangle property. Just change that to some knockout color like that. Okay. So there's my fix. That's my answer to the problem. And let's see what they ask. Okay. They want to know then how far... Um, um, Number uh, number A, how far are you from the buoy two? Okay, I can do that with the M key. I'm going to just go here and then go to here. And the, uh, it's like 3.9, 4.0. It's 39941, 4.0 miles to buoy A. So that's the answer to A, 4.0. Now, B, what is your distance off the northern point of the Dallas Bank? Now, at 10 fathom line, that's this point right here. And I, again, I'm using the M key for this because I'm just reading something off the dial. And that is, um, that I get at 2 point, I don't know how you want to draw this, like something like 2.4. That's what I get for that. And then the third one, the depth of the water, and it's 45 something, right? 45 something. At this point, I don't know because I haven't, I haven't checked that. Now, if you've been navigating on this chart for any reasonable time, you're going to know the answer to that right away. And, uh, but here with OpenCPN, you can go down here, click this button, say show, show depth units, say OK. OK, they're fathoms. So the answer to this problem is the answer how depth deeps the water, 45 fathoms. OK, so that is solving this problem you solving a running fix now again notice we're doing some kind of some kind of manipulations here to do tricks which is a whole lot easier on a paper chart just drawing lines but once you understand how to do it and do a few it's really fast and then accurate but that's the electronic solution to that problem 6-3 uh, that's the end of this